mm-hmm. I think that's why people have put a lot of emphasis on that. Um, I mean, in the past, there's like been people who, you know, are specifically trained to say that, you know, this is the right color. That's the wrong color. I mean, even in large roasteries back in the day, there were people to like feel the grounded coffee and they were like, that's the right part that's of the wrong, yeah. This episode is proudly brought to you by Mapper Forwards Workshop. It's time to become a coffee consultant. Learn how to diversify your revenue streams and create freedom from your day job while saying goodbye to that alarm clock forever by becoming a consultant within the coffee industry or directly to consumers who have shifted towards home brewing and home roasting. Protect your income from challenging times in the coffee value chain by taking this course today. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash workshops or click the link in the show notes for details. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward, friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode one of a brand new series, one that I have been nervous about for quite some time because it's about something that I don't know anything about in coffee, and that is coffee roasting. I have never roasted a batch of coffee. It's sort of one of the things that I have never been attracted to doing. And because I believe that like coffee roasters have a very specific kind of crazy and I love that kind of crazy, but it's just not my kind of crazy. I'm a different kind of crazy. So joining us on the podcast is Mark Shimeri. Mark, welcome to the podcast for the first time. Hey, Lee. It is going to be an interesting conversation because you have been releasing, um, you're like on the nerdy side of all the coffee roasting. You're someone who's not pretending to actually understand what's going on. You're releasing scientific papers. You're doing a doctorate in, or do you have your doctorate in engineering? I have had it. I've done it. And then next week I do my dissent for it. So next oh, Friday I'll be good doctor. Luck. Generally. You'll be, you'll be officially a doctor then. Fingers crossed. Um, you are currently a engineer. So you do R&D technology at JDE Peets, correct? Yeah. Okay. And you are, tell us a little bit about the story of Mark. There is glitter happening oh. there somehow. <laughs> so uh, I'm a chemical engineer by training, but during my understudies, like when I was at university, I did chemical engineering, but I did... um. I was trained as a barista in the UK in a restaurant called the the Plough and Harborn in Birmingham. And so I was trained up on a Slayer machine as a barista. So 2012, nice. two great Slayer, had has been coffee, so it's now ozone now. But um, So that was my introduction to specialty coffee. So I was a barista there for uh, on and off part-time during uni. But then at weekends and after I finished uni and part-time, uh, I became full-time barista. Um, and then... A few years passed, I went and worked in the craft beer industry for a few years and then came back and decided to do something a bit more technical. So I did an engineering doctorate and that again was in chemical engineering at the University of Birmingham where I did my, my studies as well. But that was working and funded by JD Peets, but in the UK. So I had access to the pilot plant. So I was roasting on all different machines of all different scales, of all different beans, of all different grades um, from, you know, specialty to commodity. But that was all on a uh, focus on heat and mass transfer simulations of coffee roasting. So I uh, finished that last year. Year is it now? 2024? Yeah, last year. Um, no, the year before that in 2022, three. I don't know. Time's gone crazy. <laughs> Wait, that doesn't, um, but it's weird. <laughs> a, a little while ago. But like I said, I've got my, my, my defense next week um, to, to really solidify that and finish that off. But that was four years of heat and mass transfer simulations of coffee roasting. So I was roasting everything measuring as much as I can of, of everything so every single property you can think of tried to measure it um and then basically just figuring out how to virtualize digitalize and autonomize coffee basically is uh, the pitch and now JD were just like well yeah okay do you want a job over in the Netherlands and I said yeah let's do it so moved out over there with my partner had a baby and here we are and what are you all, doing all over there set- so that that's um, so my role there is basically anything from um, from green coffee to soluble coffee to capsules to grinding to roasting any kind of technology that we need to deliver in the factories. I'm responsible for coming up with the ideas, um, implementing them on a small scale, and then scaling them up from what I did in my thesis of 500 grams all the way up to 500 kilos. But any any coffee technology I can be involved in. So. 
Before we get started, I want everyone to know that in the show notes, there is a link to Mark's Medium um, page. And there, Mark, you explained to me, this was fantastic. Mark's like, if you want a quick read through my papers, go to my Medium. If you want the long version, go read the scientific articles. Bro, I needed a translator and I have a degree in science. I needed a translator to read your stuff. So hopefully, hopefully this series is going to help us kind of break down a lot of the stuff. But it was fascinating reading um, the articles because you you dispel quite a lot of myths through what you're ta- what you're writing about and what you're talking about. Was that the objective? Like, did you just want to get to the the core of it? So, uh, well, absolutely. But also the the kind of the point of the NGD, the the first like I'd say eighteen months was me just proving everyone right. So like it was just like proving everyone with numbers. So they were just like, oh yeah, we know how to do that. You just do this, this, and this. And I'm just like, why, how? And and then they like don't know. So then I went and went f- figured it out from like first principles of like, oh, okay, that happens because of this. So like, like I said, for the first eighteen months, everyone was just like, you're just telling us things we already know. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm proving why. And then the next step was then to figure out, okay, how do these simulations? How do you make these simulations happen? Like, what what is going on in this heat and mass transfer uh, phenomenon here? But then it's like, once you've set something up, so that's like the calibration, like you calibrate something, you make it mm-hmm. work. And then everything on the medium is all the parts of it where I was like, how do I break this thing? So I was like trying to throw as much wow. at it as possible that c- can't predict. And um, the pro- well, I, I wouldn't say it's a problem. I think it turned out quite nicely. But initially I was just trying to fit it all into the thesis. And my supervisor was like, they're it's nice stories, much. but they're not. <laughs> Then, well, they said they're not big enough and like technical enough to be a journal article, but they also don't really fit in the story of the thesis because the whole point of the thesis is like you tell the story. Mm. And I was like, hey, well, can I can I publish them online? And they were like, yeah, sure. And I don't think to this day they still, um, I don't think they've realized just what they've become, um, which is quite nice. But at least it's it's something that, again, you know, JD have approved it as well. And they're just like... Um, you know, it's good that they're allowing all of this to go out in the world because it was me just trying to prove either way. Like, what's the difference in a wash and a natural? People are like, oh, you know, you charge higher, you do this, you do that. And I'm like, well, I don't know. doesn't look like it does anything for it here. <laughs> well, that was the part of it that I was like, I'm reading this going, huh? Like the size of the bean doesn't. I was expecting all my career, 20 years in the coffee industry, people have been telling me like the size of the bean matters so much and blah, blah, blah. And I'm reading your articles and I'm like, I think that you've disproved a lot of myths. Well, I think I think the, the thing to realize with some of these, with the size thing, it is only n equals one, like as in I've only tried it once. But the thing to realize as well is like that's an AA, an AB and a C coffee from the same coffee. Like, right. The chemistry is the same it'll more or less the physical properties of the beans are pretty much the same except for the size size so like that thing that we've always like it's always like cause and correlation it's just like everyone's been like oh well the size matters but maybe it's just the the thermal properties of the bean maybe it's just the density and like because you can't decouple them maybe everyone's been like oh it's definitely the size but maybe there's other things we can we can also mention later on about stuff like that but it's always just like you know they think it's this and well, maybe it is that, but that's not the reason. Like if you go like root cause analysis and one layer down, mm-hmm. there's actually a, another reason that happens. And it was really interesting for that one, for example, but why it didn't matter in that case? It usually doesn't for a lot of things. Okay. Let's keep going. <laughs> well, that's what I, it's like the age old anecdote. <laughs> anyway. I feel like I had <laughs> You had to. <laughs> so it was like right away. <laughs> we you need a t shirt and then put a coffee bean in the middle of the size doesn't matter and then put tiny bean next to a big one that's a that's a hat tip to roast a cat there. Um so in this series, like we're halfway through the episode and, and we haven't even talked about what this series is gonna be about. This series, folks, is gonna be about the past, the present, and the future of coffee roasting. The co- in the coffee industry, there is a lot that's evolving right now on all different levels 
of pretty much everything. And as we've been talking about so far this year, this in this episode, we've been talking about like a lot of assumptions that people have made in the past. And Mark, you've been, you set out in the first year and a half of your studies in your doctorate to kind of like dispel, or not dispel, sorry, I, I misspoke there, to prove everybody right. And I yeah. feel... But by, by trying to prove everybody right, did you prove everybody right? In some ways, yes. In many, many, many ways, no. Okay. So, so here's my thing. This, in this episode, we're talking about the past, right, of coffee roasting. And what, I'm, what I wanted to talk about in this was the idea of like when I was a puppy barista, you know, uh, it was coming towards the end of the, well, it was the, at the end of the second wave, third wave, or the idea of specialty coffee was becoming a thing. Tim Wendelbow, a couple of years into my time in, in specialty coffee, released an article and he was talking about light roasted coffee and, you know, everyone was jumping on that bandwagon. And I feel as though, and correct me if I'm wrong, but no one's got any more concrete way of defining what the right way to roast coffee is today as we did from the past. Like that whole journey doesn't seem to have changed. Am I right on that? Or am I seeing this the wrong way? I think, I think 99% of people are still roasted in the same way as they always have. And I don't think that's necessarily going to, maybe that was for next episode, but um, it's not necessarily going to change in the next 10 years either. I think, the the color has always been considered like you know the the thing that they can can control because people can see it and mm-hmm. I think that's why people have put a lot of emphasis on that. Um, I mean, in the past, there's like been people who you know are specifically trained to say that you know this is the right color, that's the wrong color. I mean, even in large roasteries back in the day, there were people to like feel the grounded coffee and they were like, that's the right part that's of the right, size. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can crush it in and your I fingers, think, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like that's. A, that's still the approach in many people, not necessarily on just checking the the particle size, but maybe actually that is less in a lot of videos of that as well. But the I think the point is like people still have that kind of, you know, subjective personal preference on how, how to do everything. And I don't think that's gonna gonna be something that just colour meters and, and things like that can can define and change. So I think there's just too many ways to get to the same colour that, you know, even if you do match the colour, it's not gonna be tasting the same across people, across roasters, across beans, across years. Do but you, th- I think do you, th- if you, go on. No, I was like, I think even if you look at the roasting technology, I went to a uh, world of coffee last year and you go to the area where all the roasters are and there's like 10 different companies selling drum roasters. Those things haven't changed for 50, hundred years. No. And then there's one or two that are selling different types that are like drastically different in inverted commas and then you just realize it's all the same technology so until we start diversifying those machines that we're using then you know everyone's gonna generate this kind of uh, same idea and probably arrive at the same place because oh they're limited and constrained by what they're using how much of what's been historically done has been impacted by consumers with regards to roasting. I know that sounds a little bit left of field, but coming into the next episode where we're going to talk about the present, when you approach something like this, how much of like because let's say 20 years ago the majority of people were drinking dark roasted coffee and then we, you know, we decided to introduce this idea of light roasted coffee and who knows what happened from then until now, but it's all kind of a mishmash of everything. How much of that is informing the historical progression of that? How much is informing what's like good coffee roasting in inverted commas? I I think this is a weird one because I think there's still maybe this is like a bit of a tangential response, but I think the not as many people think about the consumer as you think they do. Like everyone is in hospitality. Roasters are in hospitality business. They're making something for someone to taste and enjoy. And the amount of people that are probably, you know, leading with their preference rather than what their customer's preference is. I think that's always a difficult one. So uh, I think maybe 
in the past when, you know, really good quality coffee has not been so accessible, maybe like that's been the driver of people's preference. And that's mm -hmm. still the point where now 50 years after what I'd say, well, maybe 30 years after what we say is, you know, good idea of what coffee can be. I think we're still having the conversation about like, oh, why do you want to put sugar in my coffee? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and that's because that's led by, you know, what we've always done. Um, and I think, I, I think, I think going for what the consumer wants is, you know, at the end of the day, what we actually need to start thinking about. So, you know, 90% in the UK, I'd say probably like 80% of people have coffee with milk. So yeah. why are we changing it to this like really acidic Kenyans and trying to put those on the bar and, you know, the all the advanced fermentation stuff that we've got coming in now from, from places like Colombia, that those coffees do not work well with milk, yet people are buying them, paying an extortionate amount, well, maybe not an extortionate amount, let's say. Near paying it. way more yeah paying a lot of money for these coffees that are going to be sold with milk and probably people aren't going to enjoy because the colloidal stability of them just goes out the window and they just look mm. like a mess um, now, now so we're that was but but tangential in a great way that leads into our next episode where we're going to be talking about the current state of coffee roasting um Join us for the next episode, folks. Peace, love, and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. I really hope you enjoyed this episode, friends. Please don't forget to show us some love by subscribing, liking, commenting, and most of all, sharing this podcast with your friends. Check the show notes for links, including our sponsors and our Patreon, and stay tuned for more great conversations on the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward.